Hello people and welcome back to Kilowatt Garage. In front of you here you can see a K3 VE engine. These are fitted to a lot of early Toyota and Daihatsus. Um, it's a 1.3 litre engine. Um, it's quite a popular little engine. This particular one had a blown head gasket. I've machined the head surface, we've vacuum tested it and crack tested it and just ready to reassemble it here. Now this car was getting a fair bit of work done so the engine has actually been removed. Um, and Going through here, the first stages of just cleaning up the block. This video is not going to be about that block surface preparation, but it's just going to be about bolting the head back down. So I'm going to speed through this and we'll get on to actually installing the cylinder head. Here you can see that I'm running each of the cylinder bolts down into the, um, into the block. Um, because I've cleaned this block surface up, there's still a lot of um, oil or fluids in those bolt holes. And I don't want an issue to arise when I start talking the bolts down that um, there's a, like a hydro lock or that there's debris in the bottom of those um, threads. You can see here a bit of oil starts to squirt out as I wind it all the way in. You need to make sure that this is fully cleaned out and um, when you put your new head bolts in that there's nothing that's going to be binding up in those threads. Once you've uh, cleaned out all of the thread holes Make sure that you put the little locating dowels back into the correct position. Also make sure you use the correct tool to tap them in. Here we can see a pair of pliers is being used as a hammer. Sometimes that's how it is. Next thing you want to do is sit the head gasket onto the block. Uh, make sure it locates over those dowel pins neatly and nicely. And then you can lower the cylinder head onto the block. Now notice here that I've just sat the pistons midway through their stroke. I just didn't want anything at top dead centre just yet as I haven't uh, timed anything up. So I know that it's going to be safe to put the head on with those pistons midway down their bore. Once that cylinder head is sitting in place it's time to add all the head bolts. Now you do need to use new head bolts for this. However there is a washer that sits underneath um, each of those head bolts that has to be put in before the bolt can be put down. I didn't get new washers with the bolt of, with the pack of new head bolts, so we're just reusing the old washers and I don't have an issue doing that at all. I'm also just putting a squirt of oil underneath the um, head of the bolt and that washer, just so that when I torque these down that there's no binding up as those new bolts sit across those old washers. Now a very important stage here, we just need to actually torque up the bolts. So the tightening sequence is usually provided for you when you buy a head gasket. I do have a bit of a cheat sheet down there if you can kind of read it. Essentially it starts in the middle and spirals outwards. Now the first pass is a 20 newton meters, um, and the second pass is 33, and then that is followed by a 90 degree angle that's added. Now I like to um, repeat the first pass twice. So I set it to 20 newton meters, torque them all down, go through the sequence, and then actually just go through again. This just makes sure that I don't miss any of them. Um, and I do that again on the second pass. However, obviously that final pass of 90 degrees, you can't do any more after that. Make sure you spend your time, do this, do this well. You don't want to be interrupted when doing this. Um, otherwise, you may lose your sequence and not know where you're up to. So this is the second pass now, running through at 33 newton meters. Again, just go until the um, torque wrench just does its click or its beep, depending on what model you have, and just make sure that you have not missed any of those and you're following the sequence that they recommend. Now it's the time for the third and the final pass. Now this is an additional 90 degrees. Now you can use an angle gauge here that will measure this out for you. Um, because the engine is actually out of the engine bay, um, it's quite easy to visually see that 90 degrees as you go through. So sometimes you can't do that and it's better to actually use an angle gauge, um, particularly if you have to do your 90 degrees in multiple segments. Um, but with everything out of the way here, it was quite easy just to line it up and do a 90 degrees visually. Now with the head bolted down, it's time to return these little bucket tappets back in place. Make sure you've got plenty of oil on these. 
Now, I am putting these back in the exact order that they came out in. Um, this had good clearances when it was pulled apart. And because the head was only just machined um, and no valves were replaced, I don't actually need to um, re-measure too much here because um, I'm quite confident that it's going to be okay. But these shims are available in different sizes and you do need to actually measure the clearances, um, particularly if you've mixed them all up. So these were put in a set order when I took them out and I'm putting them back in that exact same order. It's just a matter of making sure that there's plenty of oil on them as they just drop back into place as you don't want to reassemble this dry. Once all the tappets are back in place, it's now time to put your cams in. This is the exhaust cam here and I'm just highlighting the timing mark. And again, we want to put plenty of oil down here or even um, engine pre-assembly lube um, because I just don't want when we first start this up for it to be completely dry. Now this timing mark does point upwards. However, without everything bolted in place, it is a little bit difficult to have it in that perfect position. This is why earlier I said that um, I'd have the pistons halfway down. That way I knew that I was totally safe and that no valves would open and bump into the top of the pistons. I'm just starting to set these bolts in here. At this point, I'm just using the impact just to nip them up tight. And I will come back and talk them all together later on. Same situation with the exhaust cam, put plenty of oil down and sit it into position. I also here just fitted the timing sprocket just so I was sure that it was sitting in the correct position or at least approximately the correct position as I didn't want these valves to open up and bump into the other valves that are already opened up on the exhaust side. Now I just wanted to make sure that this is in the best position to um, start. I can't have it in the exact position yet, but there is a little indentation that we need to sit at the top. I just want it in that position so that when I start to tighten down these cam bearing cups, that the valves don't actually bump into each other. Make sure when you're tightening down these cam bearing caps that you just spread the um, force equally because it will try and push some valves open. You don't want to um, damage or bend the camshaft at all, so just tighten them down evenly, again with plenty of oil. Now, the cam sprocket at the front there has to be removed so we can put this last cover in place. And again, plenty of oil down before we tighten it all up. With all the cam bearing caps just nipped down firm, um, it's now time to come along and actually torque these all down. They torque down to 13 newton meters and again just sort of start from the center and maybe start working out making sure just not put too much force on the um, each bearing cap and just be tightening them up evenly with those all torqued down it's now time to put on the inlet cam timing sprocket make sure it gets lined up correctly and you will need a spanner to actually secure the cam in place. There is a um, location on the camshaft where you can hold the camshaft firm so you can do that nut up, that, sorry, that bolt up on the outside. Now that bolt is, is tightened down to 47 newton meters. Again, I'll put the information in the description. And again, because I had the sprocket off the exhaust cam, I'm just needing to torque down those three bolts as well. Now with the cam sprockets in place, it's time to grab the timing chain. And there are a couple of highlighted links on this timing chain. Now the two links that have a bit of space between them, they're the ones that sit over the top of the two sprockets and they line up with the two um, marks on each of the sprocket gears. Now you can see here that it's not, the chain hasn't been pulled tight between those two sprockets, but that's okay. We'll tighten it all up once we get the tensioners um, and the guides in place. The um, oil pump, it doesn't matter where that sits on the chain, so there's no particular marks to line that one up. But your bottom crankshaft gear, again, there are two highlighted links, and these two highlighted links line up with a little mark on that bottom cam gear. Adding the first timing chain tensioner, again, we want to torque these two bolts up because it's too easy to strip these out if you're too strong and they're not the sort of bolts that I'd want to come loose. So I always like to torque these sorts of things just to feel confident that I've done the job well. 
now fitting the um, tensioner to the other side. This is the one that actually holds the tension to the chain. Now, you can see here, I'm actually using the original tensioner that's on here. Look, they're a bit grubby, but they've been cleaned up. They are a little bit stained from obviously being in the oil, but they're still in relatively good condition. I've also got here the um, timing chain tensioner, and um, I've actually sort of pushed that back in and compressed it back in, and you can see there's a little piece of wire in there holding that in its current lock state so that we can reassemble it. Now once that tensioner has been uh, torqued down, you'll be ready to pull out that little bit of wire and allow that tensioner to actually create some tension on the timing chain. Now you may also need here to double check that the timing chain just hasn't popped off its location before you activate that tensioner. The last thing you'd want is for the chain to be in the wrong spot and you have to redo this. You may also need just to rotate the cams a little bit just to make sure that um, the timing ten tensioner has actually fully expanded and it's locked into its current position. The next thing is we need to put the cover on here. Now there is a small gasket that's in here. You should get that in your gasket set. Make sure that you pull that out. Again, this is the timing cover how it was. It is cleaned, but it is a little bit stained. You do need to run a bead of silicon around the mating surfaces of this timing chain cover. There is no gasket that's actually provided here. Also, don't forget the uh, top of the sump here as well. Um, that needs a bead of silicon. Make sure when you're putting these beads of silicon around that you're not overly generous, but you don't want to go too sparingly because once this is together, you're certainly not going to be able to get any more silicon in there. Here is the new gasket, and I've just put a tiny dob of silicon on, on the underside of it just so it sits in place and doesn't come off when I put it together. Now, I did make a bit of a mistake here. I started to put this cover on, and then I looked back at all the parts that I pulled off the car, and I remember that I've left some things off. So I'm lucky that I spotted it now and not later. The two things I left off here was this little sort of splash guard that sits underneath the timing chain and then also the timing wheel that um, helps the ECU determine where the engine is actually positioned. So make sure you don't leave these things out otherwise the car would not have started when I put it back together. So with those things back in place it's now second time lucky and um, we're actually now putting it back together. You can see here I did make a bit of a mess with the silicon. Yeah, that's sometimes what happens. We try and clean it up as we go. I've got a bit of silicon on that top sprocket there, but I certainly don't want any leaks either. So um, just make sure that I've got ample silicon on there. Now it's a matter of going around and talking up all of those bolts. And don't remember that, don't forget, sorry, that there's the um, two bolts that come up from the sump and secure the timing cover on as well. Next step is the little half moon piece that sits over the inlet cam sprocket. Again, just a nice generous dose of silicon and put these together. And then obviously there's the two bolts that secure that in place. The next step was the front harmonic balancer or front pulley. Now I did just clean up this surface a little bit here. Sometimes they can get a bit rough and a bit gummed up. And I just wanted a nice edge for that new seal to sit on. So make sure that that's cleaned up before you put it in place and then it lines up to the keyway. And you can see here that my timing marker is still lined up, the engine hasn't been rotated at all. And this main bolt here needs to be tightened down, but I can't tighten that down yet because I need something to lock the other half of the engine and the flywheel was currently off as I was getting a new clutch put in. Now the next stage here is we put a new gasket in for our rocker cover and then we'll sit our rocker cover on, bolt it all down and that's most of this job done. Obviously this engine isn't in the engine bay so there's still a fair bit of work on this one but I hope this has helped you out. Give it a thumbs up, make sure you check out some of my other videos, leave any comments or questions below and be sure to hit that subscribe button.